いですか、はい、それではトランプ大統領からお言葉をいただきますどうぞよろしくお願いしますそれでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それでは、それ And I can tell you that it's very much on my mind. I can also tell you for certain that it is、uh, your Prime Minister's primary goal. There isn't a meeting that we have where he doesn't bring up the abductees. And- Since its inception in 1948, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea has had a turbulent relationship with its former colonizer, Japan. While never resorting to a shooting match with the land of the rising sun, North Korea has found other ways to torment the inhabitants of their maritime neighbor. In this video, we will be taking a comprehensive look at the specter that still haunts many Japanese the abduction of Japanese citizens by North Korea. The 1970s was an esteemed time for the small archipelagic nation. Japan had ascended from the ashes of its imperial past to become the second largest economy in the world. Second only to its largest trading and defense partner, the United States. While across the East Sea, the Chinese were in the midst of a cultural revolution and its former colonial possession of Korea locked in a bitter conflict with itself, Japan appeared all but invulnerable as its potential adversaries' internal conflicts enabled Japan to sail along in comparative peace. It was during this time, predestinately, That a sinister operation was taking place. From 1977 to 1983, ordinary Japanese citizens, irrespective of age, gender, or occupation, began disappearing with alarming regularity across coastal regions of the Japanese main islands. Victims were as young as three years old and included siblings, couples, mothers and daughters, schoolgirls, and restaurant workers. These were all ordinary people who had no reason to disappear without a trace. For decades, the National Police Agency, the Central Law Enforcement Agency of Japan, struggled to uncover any evidence as to the whereabouts of the missing people. Friends and family of the disappeared all reported nothing out of the ordinary with their loved ones. Investigations into their personal lives revealed the same. Police had very few clues to begin with. Virtually all that was known was that these people all went missing near or on the coast. These were not affluent victims. Nor were they involved in any criminal activity. These were ordinary Japanese citizens, the kind of people a nation as a whole, quote, wouldn't miss, unquote. There were suspicions that these disappearances were the work of North Korean agents since the investigations began. However, there was no concrete evidence that tied North Korea to any of the suspects, nor was there any plausible motive for North Korea to kidnap these people. There were plenty of North Korean sympathizers in Japan who were fluent in Japanese within the Changryon community, as well as the Socialist Party of Japan, who could have likely been persuaded voluntarily to go to North Korea. For years, the hypothesis of North Korean abductions was written off as a conspiracy theory and not given any real recognition by law enforcement. As time went on, leads began to dry up, and for over two decades, these disappearances would go. Unsolved. However, on September 17, 2002, the paradigm began to shift when an official visit to North Korea by then Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi cast light on the nefarious conspiracy theory surrounding the missing victims. During his official visit to the DPRK in an attempt to normalize relations, 
Then North Korean leader Kim Jong-il admitted that the conspiracy theory surrounding the abduction of Japanese citizens by North Korean spies was true. North Korea would officially admit to abducting only 13 Japanese citizens in total. In the years that followed, North Korea has repatriated five of those victims who now reside in Japan. It is ordinarily believed that the sole reason for the abductions was to secure native Japanese speakers who can then train North Korean spies. However, further dialogue with the North revealed that there were a plethora of reasons. One notable intention was to abduct Japanese women to become the wives of foreigners residing in the country, a vestige of North Korea's anti miscegenistic past. Other reasons include abducting Japanese citizens who closely resemble a North Korean agent who would then assume the identity of the abducted, enabling the spy to operate with greater flexibility in an otherwise antagonistic nation. Although North Korea has confessed to the abduction of 13 Japanese citizens, Japanese authorities officially list 19 missing persons as, quote, definitively abducted by North Koreans, unquote. With an additional 855 people who went missing under the same M.O., believed to have been abducted as well, leaving a total of 879 people deemed to have been abducted by North Korea. A staggering number. The following list comprises the 19 people officially recognized by the Japanese government as abductees by the North Korean government, starting from those who were repatriated. Chimura Yasushi left home in his small pickup truck on July 7, 1978, to drive to the beach with his fiance Fuki Hamamoto, near Obama, Japan. They never returned. Police eventually found Yasushi's pickup truck, parked near the shoreline with the key still in the ignition. For 24 years, the mystery of what happened to the couple would be unsolved. Both Yasushi and his wife Fuki were repatriated back to Japan on October 15, 2002. They married in North Korea and eventually had three children together during their time in the country. Their children were allowed to accompany their parents in Japan two years later in May of 2004 and have since become Japanese citizens. While the couple returned to a nation that welcomed them home with open arms and celebration, it was a bittersweet moment for Yasushi, whose mother had died just six months before his return in April. On July 31, 1978, 20-year-old Haisuke Kaoru made plans to meet his 22-year-old girlfriend, Okodu Yukiko. Kaoru was last seen leaving his home on his bicycle while Yukiko was last seen leaving work, telling her co-workers she had plans to meet Kaoru that day. They were never seen again. Police only found Kaoru's bicycle abandoned outside a public library near the shoreline in Kashiwazaki. Like Yasushi and Fuki, both Kaoru and Yukiko were repatriated back to Japan on October 15, 2002. They also had married during their quarter-century stay in the DPRK and produced two daughters who were likewise allowed to leave North Korea and live beside their parents to this day. On August 12, 1978, 19-year-old Soga Hitomi left with her mother, Soga Miyoshi, 43, to go shopping. They would go missing for 24 years until daughter Soga Hitomi was repatriated to Japan in 2002. Soga Hitomi's time in North Korea is notable because she wound up marrying American defector Charles Robert Jenkins while the two were in North Korea. The two had met when Jenkins was directed to teach her English. The two produced two daughters in North Korea, and they currently live together in Sado, Japan. Charles Jenkins passed away in 2017. Tragically, Hitomi's mother, Miyoshi, was never found. North Korea denies that she was ever brought into the country. However, Hitomi vehemently refutes this and continues to declare that her mother is alive and living in Pyongyang. She continues to appeal for her mother's release to this day. Hitomi Miyoshi remains categorized as missing by Japanese authorities. The whereabouts and ultimate fate of Hitomi Miyoshi remains unknown. On November 15, 1977, 13-year-old Megumi Yokota strolled home with a friend from school before they split in different directions. 
According to authorities, Megumi disappeared some time while walking home along the shoreline. North Korean officials confirmed that she was one of the abducted and provided a detailed description of her life in the country. The North Koreans claimed that she was abducted on a boat and taken uninterrupted to North Korea, where she was to educate North Korean spies about Japanese and South Korean culture. She allegedly married a South Korean abductee named Kim Young Nam and produced one daughter together named Kim Eun Young. The North Koreans declared that Yakota committed suicide in 1994 and repatriated her remains back to Japan. However, subsequent DNA examination revealed that the remains were not Yakota's, prompting many in Japan, including Yakota's parents, to believe that she is still alive. The family of Kim Young Nam, Yakota's husband in North Korea, was granted permission to visit him in the North and quoted him as saying that Yakota indeed committed suicide in 1994 after a prolonged battle with mental illness. They also stated that Kim Young Nam has since remarried. There has also been contention surrounding the results of the DNA testing done on the remains that were attributed to Yakota as the person who performed the test was not qualified to do so independently without a senior member assisting him. Despite this, the Japanese public remains steadfast in their position that Yakota is alive. In 2011, a South Korean newspaper reported that a Pyongyang directory listed a woman by the name of Kim Eun Gong, who shares the same birthday as Yakota, and is listed as married to a Kim Young Nam. However determined the public may be, barring the North coming clean, or a new DNA test authenticating the remains as that of Megumi Yakoda, she is still officially listed as missing. In June of 1974, seven-year-old Ko Kyung Mi and her three-year-old brother Ko Kang disappeared and have never been seen since. Information on these innocent babies on the Korean and English side of the internet is scarce. However, authorities believe they were abducted to North Korea by a woman named Kinoshita Yoko, a North Korean agent who also goes by the name Hong Su Hye. Kinoshita Yoko has since been indicted by the police, who have demanded her extradition to Japan to face numerous kidnapping charges. Nevertheless, the North Koreans have thus far refused. Kinoshita Yoko is currently wanted by both Japan and Interpol. North Korea denies ever abducting Ko Kyung Mi and her brother Ko Kyung. The whereabouts and ultimate fate of these young children remains unknown. In September of 1977, 52-year-old Kume Yutaka, a security guard at his local city hall, took a walk with an acquaintance to the nearby shore near Ushitsu under the guise of discussing with him about a potential trade deal. Unbeknownst to Yutaka, his friend was a North Korean spy who promptly delivered Yutaka over to North Korean agents who inserted him on a boat straight to North Korea. In a remarkable stroke of luck, Japanese police succeeded in eventually arresting the friend and in doing so were able to gain valuable information on the motive of the abduction, as well as crucial information about North Korea's activities in Japan. This case is widely believed to have led to the Japanese public to believe that North Korea was behind the bulk of these disappearances. The National Police Agency of Japan has since indicted Kim Se-ho, a senior North Korean official who is suspected of masterminding the abduction and called for his extradition. He remains wanted by both the National Police Agency and Interpol. Evidence notwithstanding, North Korea continues to deny the abduction to this day. The ultimate fate of Kuma Yutaka remains unknown. However, given his advanced age, it is probable that he is now deceased. On the night of October 21st, 1977, in Yonago, Japan, a 29-year-old woman, Kyoko Matsumoto, disappeared somewhere after her mother saw her walking to a nearby knitting class. She was never seen again. For decades, the North Korean government has continuously denied that they abducted Mrs. Matsumoto. 
However, in 2012, a group comprised of family members of abducted South Koreans told reporters that Kyoko Matsumoto was alive and had been living in Chongjin until 2011, when she was relocated to Pyongyang. It was further reported that she married either an ethnic Japanese man or a North Korean man from Japan, and is currently employed as a flower farmer. A 2019 report from the same group reported that she had been hospitalized in Pyongyang for a, quote, chronic illness, unquote. Japanese officials have appealed with North Korea for any information regarding her disappearance. However, North Korea has never responded in any way, shape, or form to their inquiries. Kyoko Matsumoto remains categorized as missing. The whereabouts and ultimate fate of Kyoko Matsumoto remain unknown. In July of 1978, 28-year-old Tanaka Minoru, a resident of Kobe, disappeared. According to authorities, Minoru was deceived by a former co-worker at a diner he used to work at into taking a voyage abroad. It is accepted that this co-worker orchestrated for him to be unknowingly sent to North Korea. North Korea for many years denied all involvement regarding the disappearance of Tanaka Minoru. However, in February of 2019, North Korea abruptly reversed the stance by stating to Japanese officials that Minoru is alive and well in Pyongyang and that he defected of his own free will. Negotiations concerning potential repatriation to Japan are still ongoing. Despite the sudden disclosure of his ostensible residency in Pyongyang, Tanaka Minoru is still officially listed as missing, as Japanese authorities haven't been able to verify the North's claims. In June of 1978, 22-year-old Yeku Taguchi, a single hard-working mother of three young children, went missing one night after completing her shift at a local bar where she was employed. Whoever abducted her left no evidence for investigators to follow. In 2002, when North Korea acknowledged the abduction of Japanese citizens, Yeko was listed as one of those abducted. North Korean officials claim that Yeko died in 1986. However, one infamous figure condemned North Korea's claim as a blatant lie. The person in question is none other than Kim hyun fi For context, Kim hyun fi was a former North Korean agent who helped carry out the bombing of Korean Air Flight 858 while en route from Thailand to South Korea. The explosion took the lives of all 115 passengers on board. Kim hyun fi was later arrested and extradited to South Korea, where she was expected to face the death penalty. However, she was pardoned by then-President Ryo Tae-woo, who called her, quote, a puppet of the real culprit, unquote. Kim hyun fi since resettled in South Korea, and later testified that Yeko Taguchi was her former instructor, and later friend who went under the name Ri eun hae and that she was alive in 1987, a year after they claimed she had died. She alleged that Yeko was a kind woman who would often weep about missing her children. Authorities produced a composite sketch based on hyun Fi's memory of what Yeko looked like. Yeko's children, now grown, all believe their mother is still alive. In 2011, South Korean intelligence told the children that their mother was relocated to Wonha-ri in the South Pyongyang province and that she has since remarried. Yeko's son still pleads for his mother's safe return, saying in 2008, quote, I was separated from my mother just 30 years ago when I was one year and four months old. Therefore, I don't remember my mother's warmth, voice, or smell. We want to return to being an ordinary family and regain a part of the time lost over the last 30 years, unquote. North Korea maintains that Yeko died in an automobile accident in 1986. Her current whereabouts, as well as her ultimate fate as of 2020, remain unknown. 23-year-old Ichikawa Suichi left home on August 12, 1978, announcing that he would go to the Fukiage beach with his lover, Matsumoto Rumiko. Rumiko allegedly informed her family of the same plans. They did not return. Two days later, his vehicle with the doors locked was observed at the Fukiage Beach campsite. 
North Korea insists that Suichi died in 1979 and that Romiko died in 1981. North Korea claims that both of them died of heart attacks while swimming. North Korea has not afforded any additional details. Japanese officials remain skeptical given the sheer absurdity of the account given, as well as North Korea's track record of deception regarding the fate of previous abductees. Ichikawa Suichi and Matsumoto Rumiko are still classified as missing by the National Police Agency. Their whereabouts and ultimate fate remain unknown. In June of 1980, 43-year-old Hara Tadaki was directed out to Aoshima Beach in Osaka by a North Korean agent named Shin Kwang Su. Tadaki was abducted to North Korea by a spy ship. According to the NPA, Kwang Su then impersonated him and procured a Japanese passport in his name. Kwang Su has since used that passport to go overseas several times, purportedly to set up foreign bases for North Korean agents. Japanese authorities have indicted Shin Kwang Su on multiple charges. He remains at large and is wanted by both the NPA and Interpol. North Korea claims that Tadaki died in 1986 of cirrhosis. Japan rejects this claim and has continued to urge North Korea to administer confirmation for its claims as well as to be more equitable. Hara Tadaki is still classified as missing by Japanese authorities. His current whereabouts as well as his ultimate fate remain unknown. In 1980, Japanese males Ishioka Toru and Matsuki Kaoru were vacationing in Madrid, Spain, where they vanished without a trace. Eight years later, Toru's family received a perplexing letter from Toru, postmarked from the Polish People's Republic. In it, Toru stated that he, along with Matsuki Kaoru and a Japanese woman by the name of Arimoto Kaiko, were staying in North Korea. This was the last time anyone heard from any of them. North Korea admitted to abducting the trio, and claims that Ishioka Toru died in 1988 of a, quote, gas accident, unquote, and that Matsuki Kaoru died in 1996 in an automobile accident. As stated before, Japanese authorities remain doubtful that all but five of their citizens are deceased, and urge North Korea to come clean about the situation. Ishioka, Toru, and Matsuki Kaoru are still classified as missing by the NPA. Their current whereabouts, as well as their ultimate fates, remain unknown. In October of 1983, 23-year-old Arimoto Kaiko was studying abroad in the United Kingdom, where she disappeared without a trace. Her last correspondence allegedly came in the form of a letter that was postmarked from Denmark. North Korea has confessed to the kidnapping and claims that Kaiko died in another, quote, gas accident, unquote, in 1988. Japan disputes this claim. Kaiko's parents refuse to believe their child is dead and implore the North Korean government to present proof or bring their daughter home. Arimoto Kaiko is still categorized as missing by the NPA. Her prevailing whereabouts as well as her ultimate fate remains unknown. The National Police Agency of Japan, in coordination with Interpol, has indicted several suspected North Korean officials for their roles in the abduction of Japanese citizens. The current lineup of suspects is as follows. Kinoshita Yoko, wanted in connection with the abduction of seven and three-year-olds Ko Kyung-mi and Ko Kang. Kim Se-ho, wanted in connection with the abduction of Kume Yutaka. Shin Kwang Su, wanted in connection with the abduction of Hara Tadaki, as well as Yasushi and Fuki Chimura. Kim Kil Uk, wanted in connection with the abduction of Hara Tadaki. Kim Myung Suk, wanted in connection with the abduction of Hitomi and Miyoshi Soga. Cho Sun Chol, wanted in connection with the abduction of Kaoru and Yukiko Hatsuke. Han Gum Myung, also known as Han Myung Il, wanted in connection with the abduction of Kaoru and Yukiko Hasuke. Kim Nam Jin, 
wanted in connection with the abduction of Kaoru and Yukiko Hatsuke. Mori Yoriko, wanted in connection with the abduction of Ishioka Toru and Matsuki Kaoru. Wakabayashi Sakiko, wanted in connection with the abduction of Ishioka Toru and Matsuki Kaoru. Umoto Kimihiro, wanted in connection with the abduction of Kiko Arimoto. Anyone with any information as to the whereabouts of these suspects is urged to contact the National Police Agency at 03-3581-0141, extension 5813. 879 Japanese citizens are assumed abducted by North Korea. If we all work together, it may be conceivable to bring even just one of them home. Anyone with any knowledge regarding the whereabouts of these victims is advised to contact the National Police Agency, again at 03-3581-0141, extension 5813. Together, we can all make a difference.